Dominaria United is right around the corner, and I'm sure that you have seen collector booster box openings. I know that I've watched some of them myself. I've been buying collector products for a while. We're going to ultimately decide, is it worth it to buy a Dominaria United collector booster box? And the video starts right meow. Highest level of gratitude to our patrons who power the channel through Patreon. Check out the Patreon link in the description to learn about monthly giveaways, VIP Discord access, and even our official playmat. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I am Bob Barker. Welcome to another episode of Jake and Joel, Our Magic. Today we are going to be talking about Dominaria United Collector Boosters. If you're new to MTG, this video should be very useful to you. And if you are seasoned, hit me in the comments with everything that I got wrong. We're going to talk about some key factors. I'm going to talk about what I look for in these products. I'm going to talk about the Legends cards that are included. Obviously, that's got to be on people's minds. We're going to get into the math and the likeliness of you being able to pull a specific Legends rare. It's pretty astronomically low, like way worse than shiny hunting and full odds and Pokemon. But yeah, if you do want to support the channel, click like and subscribe or share this video to a friend who might be on the fence about buying the product. They might find this helpful. I've been playing MTG since 2009. I've been collecting for about 10 years. I've been here for all the collector products, every single one of them, ever since they started it in Throne of Eldraine. Welcome everybody to the ultimate thunderdome of ridiculously expensive golden packs. <sighs> I have the whole history. You know what? And we're we're going to briefly cover it a little bit in this video where we talk about the history of these variants. Dragon Shield is our sponsor. If you want to use the affiliate link in the description of the video, that helps out the channel. If by the end of the video, you feel like you do want to buy Dominaria United, use our TCG link. It is in the pinned comment section of the video. It costs you nothing and it helps out the channel if you want to help us get to that point where we're able to do this full time. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video because like I said, we're going to be getting into the specific math of pulling a specific Legends Rare. And before I talk about what I look for in a product that gives me a good indicator of if I want to buy it, I'm going to give you my first thoughts on Dominaria United. So if you missed it, this product comes out September 9th, 2022. The recording of this video is August 31st, 2022. So before we take a deeper dive, let me talk about my first thoughts on this product. Am I buying it? I have not bought any Dominaria United yet. I have watched plenty of videos. I'm going to link everything I talk about in the description of the video, by the way. I have been looking at this product. I think this product is cool. I think Liliana of the Veil is a great inclusion. I think it's a fun product. I think the stained glass treatments are awesome. I think the full art lands look great. I think the fact that Legends cards are included is a really unique factor and something that's going to drive the sealed price of these products in the long term. Just the fact that when you go to Magical Christmas Land in your head, I know that we've all done it where we go, oh my gosh, what are the best possible chances of pulling a specific card? Well, all of the big hits are in the collector boosters. That's where you're going to have a chance to pull the Legends cards. Those don't appear anywhere else. The thing that holds me back on this product a little bit and the reason why I haven't bought any of it is because it's designed for a standard set. So when we're looking at uh, recent collector products, for example, when we're looking at Modern Horizons 2, uh, you have the fetch lands there, you have Ragavan, you got Murktide, you have all these like super powerful cards, just to name a few, that have come out in that set. And they also have throwback cards in the product that came out of Modern Horizons 1, Urza, some swords, a bunch of really good stuff, Force of Vigor, that's also in that product. Granted, that product is more expensive, but you get more bang for your buck. And Double Masters 2022 is the same thing. When you have a product like Double Masters 2022, you're thinking, wow, we have a set that's just jam-packed full of tried and true staples, EDH staples. Commander is the lifeblood of MTG. More and more people join Commander because it gives playability to their old cards that have kind of fallen to the wayside in their collection. Dominaria United Collector Boosters is a set that is designed for a standard format. There are going to be some cards in Dominaria United that are really good sleepers that when people start to play with them, they rise in price. Cards that are sleepers right now, I'm sure that they exist in Dominaria United. Now, there's going to be some mythics in Dominaria United that are absolutely pushed to make us think, okay, well, this set has a ton of value in it. Liliana of the Veil is a great mythic, even though it's not played much in modern anymore. 
it still has application and it's still a very good card. A lot of people are speculating that it's going to have a good effect on Pioneer. But that said, Liliana of the Veil I don't think is enough. And I, and I do think it's calculated if you did look at Double Masters 2022, where Liliana of the Last Hope shows up and a lot of people were asking, well, why wouldn't they pick Liliana of the Veil here? You know, this is a this is a pretty good time to have a push Liliana. Well, hindsight is 2020, and now we see in Dominaria United, they needed a card that was going to help push Dominaria after all of the wallet fatigue that came from Double Masters 2022. So I do think that's a calculated choice. I think it could have been either Liliana in Dominaria, as long as you had all Liliana in the set, I think it would have been fine. I think it's a great inclusion and it's a great way to hype people up, specifically people who don't have Liliana of the Veil, which originally came out in Innistrad many years ago, many moons ago, right, with all those werewolves. But let's talk about the longevity of the product. This is a product that has Legends cards in it. I've watched some of the videos. I haven't seen any very impressive collector booster openings. It's like I'll see a collector opening that has like a couple Liliana's in it and it'll be a Legends card that's worth like maybe a dollar. I mean, you're talking about coming out of Double Masters 22 where granted the collector product is a way different product than this collector product. You're talking about four boosters compared to 12 boosters. You're talking about a set that's packed full of cards that have tons of reprint equity versus a set that is brand new, a bunch of new cards that people haven't even played with. The rarity is about the same of pulling a textured foil. You know, you're talking about you're opening Dominaria United boosters, looking for Legends cards, and you're getting lucky enough to open a Legends card. Well, again, we're going to talk about Legends cards later on when we get to the end of the video. We're going to talk about the chances of pulling something specific. I'm sure that some of you are salivating over the chance of can I pull a pack fresh tabernacle? Am I going to be the one who grabs moat? Am I going to be the person who gets the abyss? There's a lot of really good cards that you can pull from legends, but I don't expect there to be a lot of them popping up. I'd be surprised if one person watching this video goes home with the tabernacle at Pender Vale, and we're going to talk about why. So the other thing when I'm considering buying a collector booster box, what I look for are certain factors that help me see, you know, like what is the value of this product going to be? How likely am I to open well, you know, like how likely am I to hit value? If I'm spending something like $250 on a box or upwards of $300, I want to know like what my chance is that I'm going to break even or or come out ahead. And some of you watching the video, you might be like, well, shut shut the hell up. That's not what the game's about. It's, it's about buying the cards and being happy that you have the cards. I'm happy to have the cards, but anytime that I'm spending $250 or $300, I'm probably going to think about, is this a good educated buy? That's something that's important to me. So for me, the things that I look for are the gimmick. What is the gimmick? What is the chase card? In this set, it is very specific. It's Legends cards. In Double Masters, it was textured foils. Previously before that, we had um, Neon Dynasty, which had Hidetsugu Red Neon Ink. And then there was Blue and Green and Yellow Neon Ink. And we kind of learned from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty that the Red Ink Hidetsugu it's like finding a textured foil and then having it be the the textured foil with like a different color, which is something that Double Masters didn't do. Instead, they were like, okay, we're going to have five different textured foils that you can find, but they're all just going to be the same. There's not going to be one that's a, a hidden unique variant, which is why Hidetsugu Neon Ink Red is over $1,000. You could buy the regular card that's worth a dollar, or you could pay over $1,000 to get the red one. That's just because it's rare. It's not even a reserve list card. Gimmicks in the past previously, like extended art cards, you know, those were originally box toppers in Ultimate Masters. Those appear all the time. There's videos in the past where I've gone in and I've been like, you know what? I'm going to go in and I'm going to look at specific variants. I'm going to go, all right, well, here's this variant. We have this kind of showcase card and let's compare Theros Beyond Death to Throne of Eldraine and let's compare Battle for Zendikar to Theros Beyond Death. And let's compare, you know, Core Set 2021 to each one. Each of these sets, you might be looking at Dominaria United going, these stained glass cards, people are going to love these. Especially if you're new to the game, you might be like, I'm going to collect the stained glass cards because I think they're going to the moon. I'm going to tell you, they're not. The cards that are good will go to the moon. The cards that are, that are actually good in the set that are stained glass, maybe a few of them will spike up in price, but the majority of them are going to bottom out. And the reason that we see that is because we've seen that set after set ever since this started in Throne of Eldraine. The other thing that I look for is what cards in the set are good. This is like land cycle, 
rares that might be good, mythics, all these different variables that change from product to product. All right, so I am over here on Card Kingdom right now, and we're just kind of looking at some of the stuff. Whenever a new set comes out, you get a bunch of mythics that are kind of overhyped. I think the Timeless Lotus is kind of overhyped at 32. Now keep in mind, Card Kingdom is going to have kind of inflated prices, especially on pre-sales. So definitely do your own due diligence. Take nothing on this channel as financial advice. This is just somebody on the internet making an entertaining video and kind of giving you my thoughts on it. Timeless Lotus, I think is overhyped at $32.99. We've reviewed some of these cards already. There's some good stuff like Sarah Paragon, there's some interesting interesting cards. Let's sort by uh, price high to low here. So clearly Liliana of the Veil. Now this is going to be printed in different variants. You're going to get this base variant. You're going to have a foil variant of this. You're going to have a showcase variant. Just keep that in mind. I think there's going to be big corrections on these mythics, especially like some of these mythics. Shieldred is really good. Some of them will hold their price, but a lot of them will tank. I want you to look at Renin 7. I want you to look at some of these recent sets that have come out that have had the, the Phyrexian Tamio, the Phyrexian Ajani that just came out. I think that this is going to just keep going down. This is a very specific type of Planeswalker. Without a creature on the battlefield, it's it's pretty much useless. These are the kind of things you have to keep in mind when you are looking at a set. Also, the land cycle in this set, this card is, is also pretty narrow. A lot of the land cycles in these recent sets, where you look at Modern Horizons 2 that has fetch lands, the battle bond lands that were in Commander Legends, there's just like a lot of really good lands. Even um, the Innistrad sets that recently came out, those had good lands that are good for EDH. The lands in here are good. I'm not saying that they're not good, but you could see that they don't have the same type of price that most of these cards have. Now, keep in mind, most of these cards are racing to the bottom and they will continue to race. But yeah, the pain lands, these are great for EDH. The fact that you can float them for colorless, wonderful budget dual lands for commander purposes, but they aren't a ton of value, especially when you're opening a collector booster product, which is what this is a review for. I'm looking through here. I'm not super stoked on the land cycle. And then we have a bunch of pre-order prices for cards that are kind of overhyped. You know, you have some very medium mythics and rares that have prices that are over $5 that aren't going to be worth $5, especially once people start opening this set in droves chasing legends cards. So when I look at the mythics that are super good in the set, I'm like Liliana the Veil, okay, Shieldred, the Paragon is great. Karn Silex is interesting. I don't know if it's going to be super good, but it is destruction. I wish it didn't exile the Silex, but it is destruction in monocolored decks that don't typically get this kind of access to this kind of spell. Plaza of Heroes is an interesting rare. This is a fun land that people are speculating is going to make a an impact. This is a kind of thing that I think could go in monocolor decks and two color decks. I think the more colors you have, the less likely you're able to run this kind of effect. But yeah, I've looked through here. There's some fun stuff. I do encourage you to come look through this. Look at the rares. Look at the mythics. The big thing for me, the land cycle just isn't really there as far as if I want to buy collector boosters with the intention of cracking them and finding the value, getting the value back. Again, all of these stained glass cards, we'll take a look at them right now. This is an article that I do encourage you to read. Again, everything is going to be in the description of the video, so do your own due diligence. I'm not going to read through all of this, but this basically breaks down the Dominaria United Collector Boosters. So come in here, take a look at this. It's going to tell you about the etched cards. There's some textured treatments that are going to be in here. This is an example of the stained glass treatment that I've referenced a couple times. So new players might see the stained glass treatment. Look, I'm telling you, these are going to be bountiful. They're going to be everywhere. So don't think that these are super rare, okay? I'm, I'm telling you, I've been here since Throne of Eldraine. I'll break it down for you really quick. Each of these sets are going to have different showcase treatments. You have the storybook frame and Throne of Eldraine. You had the constellation cards that came out of Theros Beyond Death. You had Battle for Zendikar that had its unique treatment that came out that year. You got the soft glow treatments from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. You have the sketch treatments from Modern Horizons 2. There are so many of these showcase treatments, and these are different from the borderless treatment. You know, we're going to talk about that. We got to this point where we have all these new variants, and it goes back to 2019 with Throne of Eldraine. And this comes right after the Guilds of Ravnica, uh, Ravnica Allegiance, and War of the Spark Mythic Edition debacles. Okay, so this is just like a year after that. Guilds of Ravnica Mythic Edition was released October 3rd, 2018, and it was a nightmare. 
This was on Hasbro's site. I'm actually going to link a video that you can watch below that kind of talks about the Mythic Edition debacle. It was on Hasbro's website. Everybody was trying to get the Mythic Edition. This is kind of like the very first secret layer <laughs> in a way because it was only available for this one day. It was $249.99. You knew exactly what you were buying. You were buying a box that had some booster packs in it and specific boosters had alternate art treatments of Planeswalkers that would only appear in this one product. I was lucky enough to get one. A lot of people that I know were not able to secure the product. Now it sells at a high markup years later. Well, when this happened, you had a bunch of people that were ready to order the product, but Hasbro's site crashed. Now you might be like, what is the point of you telling me this? I'm, I'm trying to catch you up so that you can understand these collector booster products, how we got to where we are. So Guilds of Ravnica Mythic Edition, big, massive problem. Lots of community backlash. People were mad. They were like, why are you selling on Hasbro? This is awful. The site always crashes. There's too much traffic. Everybody wants this. I'm sure executives learned a lot. They were like, okay, we need better infrastructure for this kind of thing because people are mad. Anyway, the product sells out like that it's just immediately gone so lots of complaining lots of people saying my credit card got billed but i didn't get the product lots of people on the phone talking making sure that they confirmed i remember laying on the bed on the phone with hasbro for like hours and i finally got on the phone with hasbro to confirm my order and i just remember like the the representative sounded so tired and i was just tired and i waited all day to confirm that i got that order and then like a month later and this is november keep in mind this came out October 3rd, 2018. So in November, they start sending out, oops, Wizards of the Coast is sending out to people who tried to get the Guilds of Ravnica product and people who succeeded and people who didn't succeed alike got box toppers shipped from Ultimate Masters. Now, Ultimate Masters wasn't even out. Ultimate Masters would come out December 7th, 2018, a month later. So this is the first time that we saw box toppers and box toppers at the time we know them we know them now as extended art cards but box toppers at the time they were like this big they were like oh my god you can get liliana of the veil in this new set that's coming out ultimate masters you could get karn you could get all these really good cards snapcaster mage cavern of souls all in a borderless treatment oh my god the world is ending what are we gonna do it's a fucking Tarmogoyf. People are like, saliv they're like, oh my God, I, I've, I've forgotten Mythic Edition. Just give me more of these box toppers. Ultimate Masters comes out. We get all these box toppers that we now know as extended art cards that would show up when, folks, when Throne of Eldraine came out in 2019. Now that wasn't even the last time that they used Hasbro's site, or actually they moved away from Hasbro's site and they moved everything to eBay. And we were able to have one more debacle, which was War of the Spark Mythic Edition, which was a colossal failure, but as a consolation, they sent out those uncut sheets of War of the Spark that you see hanging out on the wall. That kind of catches us up. So when Throne of Eldraine came out, we got a collector product for it and everybody went crazy. There was actually this one collector product for it that was never revisited again. It was the, de it was the deluxe collector's edition and it was actually a, a stupid, awful product and it was, it was so dumb. Uh, which is why we've never seen it again. It must not have sold well. Whales must not have wanted it. Maybe the value wasn't there, whatever. This was the collector fat pack, whatever you want to call it, the collector bundle. But I remember when this set came out, I was so excited. There were extended art cards. I bought a bunch of stupid shit. I just like bought cards because I was like, oh my God, we're getting, we're getting like new treatments. And I was just talking about those showcase treatments from Dominaria United. Let's see, I bought, I mean, these are just like old specs that have just sat in here. Some of these cards are good, but I definitely would have taken a loss on this, just specking these cards. But let's get to the part of this that actually matters. So one thing that I went through and bought when this set first came out were these showcase cards. I was like, I need to have all of them. I was like, I want all the showcase cards. So I would have paid maybe like dollars or dollar fifties for these because, you know, hey, it's different art, right? But now, years later, we're able to look back and go, oh, God, you can just buy those showcase cards for cheap. You know, they're not worth anything. They're just, you know, they're they're essentially just filler. And I'm showing you this. I'm showing you so that you don't make the same mistakes as me. Clearly, you don't need to do this these days. It's easy to look back on Jake in 2019 and say, oh, you fool, you absolute fool. But we didn't really know at the time as a community that that was going to be the future of this, that every single product right, was going to have a collector version that comes with it. 
Now I've bought a lot of collector products across the the years since they started collector products. I'm not going to act like I don't have them. You know, the the gimmick. I was talking about the gimmick earlier. In this set, there is no really big gimmick. The gimmick in this set in Throne of Eldraine is the extended art cards. Because in Throne of Eldraine, they were actually rare. The extended art foils only appeared in like three or four packs. If you've opened any recent collector boosters, you know that the extended art cards, they show up in foil all the time. That's like the basic MO. And then there's the over the top factor, which is like now they've evolved to textured foils. Um, Hidetsugu Neon Ink Red. They have an, an, a big gimmick in Dominary United. There's Legends cards, which are reserved list cards. Now there's a bunch of stuff in Legends that isn't worth shit. We're gonna talk about that. I'm trying to uh, help you understand how to be a well-rounded collector and understand these products and kind of like the provenance of like where they started, where they are now. Provenance isn't the right, the right word. The historical data points that point toward, you know, how we got to where we are. Talking about this, you just saw, don't go crazy buying all of these stained glass cards. If you are intending to pick them up, wait until the set comes out a few weeks. Not financial advice, but seriously, wait a few weeks for it to come out. You could just snipe these singles. You'll be able to find them at great prices. You're going to have people that are hunting for Legends cards in droves that are just putting bulk lots of this stuff. You see it every single time, every set. There's going to be just lots and lots and lots of Dominaria United because people are going to be chasing Legends cards. Now, I've done these reviews in the past. I've gone through and I've... I've you know, looked at each individual card and uh, there's no real reason to even do an EV of the set right now because so many of these cards are going to race to the bottom. It's just useless information. It's like me pumping a product. Like anybody who's watching a collector booster opening right now is going to be like, oh, my, there's so much value. This guy on the internet is an idiot. He's telling me that Dominary United might not have all of the value that that they're saying, but I'm looking at pre-order prices and I know that these cards are valuable. I'm telling you just wait just wait give yourself some time especially if your goal is to buy singles but yeah the the lands in here are cool there's some fun stuff these are the extended art cards originally box stoppers like we just talked about i remember watching the rudy openings i know when he was opening throne of eldraine and he was like box topper we got foil box toppers ladies and gentlemen all right we got a troll rare here it comes dance of the mans <laughs> dance of the mans there it is. There it is, baby. Whoa, Samuel. Circle of Loyalty Mythic Full Art Box Topper, baby. There's a major hit. Now, this is the type of card I can see holding the couple hundred dollar price tag. <laughs> um, it's been an interesting experience uh, to see the swings in value. The market's perception, how the market's taken to the product, the positive, the negative. It, it's been a really wild journey with these new collector's products. And only time's really going to tell how things are going to settle out. I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Look at this article. You could come in here. It's going to show you where everything is. Over the years, Wizards of the Coast has gotten really good about showing us exactly where the variants are. This was one of the big complaints early on. We would go, well, where the hell do I find what card? Is it in a set booster? Is it in a draft booster? Well, they tell you all of it here. The big hits are in the collector boosters. You can see here, if you want to chase after the Lost Legends, boom, baby. You got to buy the collector booster. If you want to chase after the textured foils boom baby you gotta buy a collector booster it's not going to be in the other stuff if you are chasing the big money hits if you think that you're going to be the lucky one who pulls the tabernacle at pendrel veil uh, i'm just telling you don't get your hopes up so we have this video here this is a um this is somebody hunted this shiny pokemon for seven years this is fire red all right, right generation now, six on, fire uh, red little uh little moment here where after seven yeah. years oh. of hunting they finally found a shiny centret full <laughs> odds shiny from pokemon red okay seven it took them years, seven years to find this now granted it has to do with the pokemon that spawn in that pool or whatever but to spend seven years on something then to finally have it happen it's just, it's got to be such an amazing feeling. And my point in showing you this is because the odds in Pokemon Red of finding a full odds shiny were 1 in 8,000. That means every time you run into a random Pokemon in this game, roughly 1 in 8,000 times, 
you're going to come across a shiny variant of that Pokemon. So you can see seven years can go by if you just don't have the best luck. Or even if you have great luck, maybe only four years go by. Let's get into the math. Let's go over here to Dominary United. I want to go into Magic Editions A to Z. And we are actually going to go into Legends, baby. This is a, a beloved set from 1994. Came out just a year after the game officially came out. But we're going to sort by price high to low here. And I want you to just see, okay? This is the Holy Grail card of Dominary United. If you buy a collector booster, this is what you want to pull. Tabernacle of Pendril Vale. Now, what if I told you that after we just watched that shiny hunt, which took seven years, one in 8,000 chance. What if I told you your odds of pulling Tabernacle at Pendril Vale in a single Dominaria United collector booster? What if I told you those odds were more than six times more rare than the shiny hunt that we just watched? Your odds of pulling Tabernacle in a single pack, they're essentially 0, 0.00. One in 60,499 whatever that percentage is. Pretty bad. Pretty rough, to say the least. Now, if you opened collector boosters from Double Masters 2022, you would see that, oh, okay, there are people pulling textured foils. That's going to be the equivalent of just finding a regular Legends card. Pretty rare. That was essentially one per case. Those boxes were eight. There were eight boxes per case in Double Masters 2022. But keep in mind, Dominaria is going to have 12 packs per box, where Collector Boosters from Double Masters 2022 had four per box. So the odds of finding a Legends card are going to be very difficult, and then the odds of finding a specific Legends Rare are going to be 0% chance. You're just not going to find it. Like I said in the beginning of this video, if someone here finds a Legends card uh, that's good or a Tabernacle, there's probably going to be one person out of everybody who watches this video that finds it. Maybe it's you, most likely it isn't. Shout out to Spectre who sent this to me. He said, your odds are about four times more likely to get struck by lightning. So like I said, there are very good hits in here. You have Abyss, Chains, Moat. Uh, sadly, Nether Void was pulled. The Wizards of the Coast pulled a mega hit because of the artist. So Nether Void just isn't gonna be in the set despite being one of the best, absolute, just strongest, most punishing cards in the game is not going to be in here, but you can see just scrolling through, there are some good hits. Now, here's the thing, is if you do pull a Legends card that is not good, let's sort by price low to high. Say you're lucky enough to get a Legends card, you could be going home with Devouring Deep. You could be going home with a Glyph of Life, a Pit Scorpion, an Emerald Dragonfly. There are just tons of Legends cards that aren't worth anything that are going to be showing up because it's not just restricted to rares that are going to appear in Dominaria United Collector Boosters. You're going to find commons. You're going to find uncommons. All right, so I'm over here at, at Rip and Ship by Moonshot where Lance is going to be opening tons of Dominaria United. So make sure you go check out that channel if you want to see some openings. He's going to be opening a bunch of this stuff. We have, um, I'm going to turn him down here for the sake of the video. But yeah, we have... Legends card getting pulled here, Raging Bull. It's about a $3 card, not a lot of value here. So we have a, a patron here of Lance's or a follower of Lance's coach who's opening a box, gets lucky enough to pull one of the Legends hits. However, it is a Raging Bull, which is only worth about three bucks. So Lance on, the, on this video has it titled Third Lost Legends Hit in the Case. I hope that that is going to be consistent and that's not just like a god case that gets a bunch i hope that there's a lot of legends cards appearing in in these boxes maybe at a higher frequency than the neon ink cards or the textured foils but uh time will tell as more and more of these openings happen you know that's why we come in we watch these collectors openings there are tons of people a lot of premium stores that get the product early that can kind of show us that helps inform whether or not our expectations are going to be there or not help us make an informed decision now, thankfully, the prices on these boxes aren't exactly going into the moon. So let's look at what the prices on the boxes are currently. All right, so here are prices on Dominaria United Collector Boosters. Let's go on eBay. We'll find the cheapest one. Uh, one thing to think about is, like, if you are chasing the Legends cards, make sure that you buy probably a sealed case. If you're buying stray boxes, you could have somebody who buys a sealed case. They open until they find a good Legends card, sell the rest of the boxes back on the market. I mean, that's, you know, that's going to happen. That's the chance you take when you buy a single box. 
this is attractive to whales, you know, like players that are like, I'm just going to buy a ton of them and try to find Legends cards. Do keep in mind, though, uh, you know, these prices aren't exactly going to the moon. They're kind of pretty consistently at around 250s. Uh, it is a product that is made for standard. So the power level of the cards in this are going to be less than, you know, Double Masters, Modern Horizons 2. We've already discussed this. This is your odds of opening a Legends card. You can find this in the description of the video. All right, so this is the information that people are really interested. Your odds of opening a rare Legends card. Now, we already talked about this, okay? Your odds of finding a specific rare are 1 in 60,499. Meaning, you would need to open 60,499 Dominaria United Collector Booster Packs to guarantee that you find yourself a gem mint tabernacle at Pendrel Vale. Now granted, after you open that many packs, you're gonna be opening an, a moat, an abyss, every legends card, all the uncommons, all the commons, all that stuff. But you will have paid, assuming that each pack is $20, you will have paid about $1.2 million. Not worth it. Which would about be the price that you would pay if you wanted to buy 268 near mint tabernacle at Pendrel Vale's off card kingdom for around $4,500 a piece. So every single thing that I've talked about today, like I said, will be in the description of the video. Is it worth it? And my final thoughts on the product. This is a product that I have not bought and it was very easy after looking up the math, after thinking about previous products for me to just kind of say, you know, I might buy a box or two for the long term. I do think because there are Legends cards in it, that will be attractive long term to buyers. But I think by and large, when people see just how many legends cards appear and how many are actually good you know i'm waiting to see some big hits i'm waiting to see somebody pull something that is absolutely exceptional off the legends list but it's not the kind of thing that i'm gonna chase the odds are just insane the person on the seven year shiny hunt has better odds of finding the uh, like six times better odds than finding a specific legends rare so it just isn't the kind of thing that's practical i think that you know whales who are just like i have to find the minty fresh tabernacle at pendrel vale i think that's who's being targeted here you could just take that money straight up buy that card if that's a card that you absolutely have for your collection you're like i want that reserve list goodness give it to me put it in my mouth but all in all this is a product for me that i might buy one or two boxes to sit on i definitely think that the value is going to be i don't think that these are going to tank in price but if you're going to be opening them, you're going to be very, very pressed to get your value back, especially at $250 a box. That's my final thought on the product. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been kind of long winded, but I wanted to talk to you about specific things. I hope you've enjoyed the chapters that you could skip around in the video. In the future, every single collector booster box that comes out will be met with this same kind of due diligence to make sure that if we're buying it, it makes sense. If we're spending $250, I know that there's a vocal minority of, of players that like to scream and cry whenever anybody tries to say, is it worth it? And they're like, no, you shouldn't even ask if it's worth it because it's worth it just to have the cards to hold. Well, that's fine. You could buy two collector booster boxes or you could buy a brand spanking new Xbox or brand spanking new video game system that's going to last you X amount of years. When we're spending a lot of money, we like to make informed decisions. If you want to get involved in Jake and Joel on a deeper level, go check out our Patreon where people are talking about this kind of stuff daily over there. Anyway, Godspeed out there. Don't FOMO out. Enjoy the openings. Live vicariously through other people that are opening so that you could just enjoy their fun. Come check out a Foil Quest stream. Join the Patreon. We upload videos daily, so come hang out. We'd love to have you. Talk to you later. Goodbye. Oh,